Thank you, Clyde. Was the, was the operative word nearly there? <laughs> I, I want to first say a personal word of thanks to George Mason and Worcester Baptist Church. And I'm thankful that I'm not, not going to get a scolding now. <laughs> I, I didn't. I, I uh, always like to avoid that. But really, a personal word of thanks to Wilshire and uh, George for hosting us tonight. Joanna and I have been members here since 2004, and this church is, uh, I can't begin to tell you what a blessing it is in my life and in our lives. Thank you, too, to Wilshire chef John Yost and his staff who have prepared this wonderful feast for us tonight. Uh, everybody getting enough food? They always make eating here at Wilshire a special time of food and fellowship. In case you're wondering, the young man working the camcorder over here, you know, I, I, I asked him, I said, he was going to wear jeans. I said, I'm going to recognize you, you know, and he said, oh, great. But anyway, this is my son, Travis, and uh, he's, he's going to be taping this for us tonight. This summer, he has graduated from college, gotten married, and received found gainful employment. <laughs> wife Christy is right here sitting here at the table with my wife Joanna on the other side and we're glad they were able to come and help out tonight. Our board has asked me to give you a brief update on TBC but first I have a few more uh, brief thank yous. First I want to express my appreciation to Clyde Glazner and his committee who have planned this dinner. Uh, we, Michael Bell and I have met with Clyde and his committee several times. You would be surprised how many breakfasts at IHOP and Cracker Barrel it takes to plan a dinner like this. But uh, it's, been, it's been great working with them and uh, I really appreciate what Clyde and his committee have done. Thank you, Clyde. I also want to thank Steve Wells, who's seated right back here next, next to the tree. Uh, after David retired two years ago, our board reorganized and Steve Wells was elected chair. He helped guide our board through those months after David retired, as we were working on the question of where do we go from here. And I can't say thank you enough for Steve's hard work and sure hand in guiding us through that transition. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> Finally, thank you to Michael Bell. Michael became chair at mid-year last year and has been tireless in pushing us forward and carrying out our mission at TBC. And when I took this position in January, I knew I needed the continuity of Michael's, Michael Bell's leadership and so did our organization. At a very critical time when we were attempting to reconnect with our supporters and to reassert ourselves in pursuit of our mission. So at our annual board meeting down in Houston in January, before Michael had a chance to object, I asked our board to re-elect him for another year as chair and they did that unanimously on the spot. Michael has continued to work tirelessly for TBC and has given me guidance and support that has been critical in my work here. Thank you, Michael. <laughs> Bill Lineberger is our vice chair and will succeed Michael as chair in January 2012. Bill wasn't able to be here tonight, but I've had to call on Bill several times this year and he's always been ready with the information and assistance that I've needed, and he's going to be a great asset to us as chair next year. We want to take this opportunity to give you a brief update on TBC. Our board and I are building on the foundation laid by David Curry and others in ways that meet the challenges of today's Baptist environment. The threat to Texas Baptist is less visible than it was 20 years ago, but it's just as real. Ken Camp's recent article in The Standard about TBC led with Michael Bell's question. If we are walking along the same path, why are there two state conventions in Texas relating to the Southern Baptist Convention? Michael's point was that we're obviously not walking along the same path. The Baptist General Convention of Texas affirms and respects the authority of the local church, and the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention does not. Churches relating to the BCT are free to give to the SBC, the CDF, or elsewhere, or a combination thereof. Whereas the Southern Baptist of Texas Convention expressly restricts its affiliated churches to giving only to the Southern Baptist Convention. Let me say clearly that Texas Baptist Committee supports the right of each church 
to give to the Southern Baptist Convention or the Parker Baptist Fellowship or both. Local church autonomy is a bedrock Baptist principle that must be respected. The Southern Baptist of Texas Convention draws churches away from the BGCT and then restricts their freedom. Carl Thickling is director of the BGCT's pastoralist church team, which provides pastors <coughs> to, where are you, Carl? There you go, there's Carl. Which provides pastoralist churches with the information and support they need to make informed decisions. The work is daunting. And TBC works with Carl to give him and his team any support we can. Our board considers one of our key roles to be that of a resource to churches seeking pastors to inform them about candidates who will respect and protect their freedom and about the track record of candidates whom they are already considering and whether those candidates might actually threaten the church's freedom. Along the same line, we inform Texas Baptists about the qualifications of candidates for BGCT office and encourage attendance at the annual meeting. TBC also educates Texas Baptists about what it means to be a Baptist. The Baptist movement will survive only if Baptists know our heritage. We've produced a series of Baptist brief videos on our TBC website, over 70 videos, each lasting from two to three minutes, focusing on Baptist history and principles. I've heard from professors in our Texas Baptist universities who are using these videos in their classes, as well as pastors using them in their churches. In fact, beyond Texas, earlier this week, I received a request from a pastor in North Carolina for a DVD of our Baptist Priest videos to use with two study groups that uh, they're going to have in their church this fall on the, on the subject of identity. So uh, these, they, uh, these have proven valuable, and the Baptist History and Heritage Society has recognized and recommended our Baptist Priest videos and provides a link to them from its website. Last fall, we started the Texas Baptist Committed blog, and in May, we began publishing a weekly electronic newsletter called the TBC Midweek Baptist Roundup. I'm encouraged by people who have emailed me or called me since we began the roundup to ask for help in their pastor searches, as well as those who simply say, we're glad TBC is still here. We need you. <coughs> Finally, we will have a TBC breakfast at the BGCT in Amarillo this year. We're not, not quite ready with an announcement on the speaker, but we expect to be able to announce it soon in the roundup. Our breakfast will be Tuesday morning, October 25th, at the Civic Center, where the convention will be meeting. It will be over by 8 a.m., just in time for you to get to the Igniting Hope in the Community, I say that right, Steve? Igniting Hope in the Community session. Right there at the Civic Center, kicking off the ministry opportunities for that morning. Very convenient. Come and have breakfast with us at, yes, 6.30, but that's so that you can get to these ministry opportunities by 8. So come and have breakfast with us, and then go do missions. It's what Baptists do. Eat, fellowship, hear the word, and then go and do. Thank you. Michael?